You are listening to KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank, your partner in Possible. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to Currently. It is me, Daniel Kuzer, with my best friend, Chris Wright. Chris, how are you? Doing well, man. We uh, got an exciting interview lined oh, up, and we, we have do. some big Kansas City current news. So, man, oh man, it's uh, we got things. We got things to talk about. A little bit, look, some quick hitters. But, uh, dude, what's uh, what's what's going on in the world? Are you, you any uh, anything fun in your world? Anything to share? I know I talk to you every week. Is it is it getting boring? Are you getting tired of this? No, I I mean I, I love talking on camera to people. So uh, you we'll do. I do it for work, man. That's, that's you do, do it for work. work. Okay, yeah. so you're not one of those people that are like, no, I'm I'm not camera ready. You're not oh, you're not like no. that. What you see is what you get. <laughs> see, I would be on camera at work, but I have some people at work that are like, oh no, please no cameras. And I'm like, what are you talking about? How did you ever go to the office and be face to face with someone if you're scared for someone to see your face? I don't really understand. It is what it is. Uh, these faces right here, they have to be on camera. Look at us. Look at us right now. Take a picture. Look at that, look at that smile. That's Take a, a picture. A, that's a beautiful improv smile right that's there. A, that's so. some crest whitening strips right there. That's what that is. <laughs> uh, a little plug. We'll put we'll put that in post. We'll no, the uh, <laughs> but we got a very special guest today, and we'll kick it to her in just a minute. Uh, Jackie Gutierrez from a little publication called Women Kick Balls. Don't be scared, men. It's for you too. I guarantee it. You'll enjoy it. Uh, gosh, we'll get to this, man. But it's just a great conversation. I'm excited to for everyone to hear it. Uh, Little thing we teased. Well, first of all, let me back up. We don't have any new five-star ratings and reviews. If you go help us out, if you've got to do that, please hit us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, your platform of choosing, and give us a good rating. Uh, we appreciate it. It helps other people find the network and the podcast and uh, and all that. Also, we've been teasing this for weeks, buddy. Our captain. Oh, captain, my captain. <laughs> Desiree Scott is back in action, my guy. What are you thinking about this? Are we excited? You know, I feel like we went on a roller coaster. Like it's a with roller all coaster. These, all these signings, we're like, there's no way Desi's coming back. There's no right. way she's coming back. She's not coming back. We're, you know, Dabinia, Di Bernardo, um, Gatra, like, you know, Loera killed it at the D mid position. There's no way she's coming back. And as time went on, you know, these things kind of dragged out. And I thought there might be a chance. Um but you I saw the I teases. Could, I saw on the Twitter, teases. right? Yep. Did you guess it? I did. Um, I did too. You know yeah. why? There were some, but all okay. You can say back, sure. But there were some Canadian artists in there, dude. I didn't get that. I didn't put that together. If that's a coincidence, then cool. But I went in there and I was like, oh, "Well, this person's from Canada. This person's from Canada," uh, and I was like, "I'm gonna do some googling. Are they all from Canada? They aren't." But like Drake was in there. And that's the only one I can think of right now. But I know there were at least a couple others. So maybe that was intentional. Maybe it wasn't. But she's back, dude, for another year. And uh, I I hope for another one after that, maybe. I don't know. I mean, she's 35 years old. Um, you know, I don't see her. And I think we all kind of felt like retirement could be in the cards for her. Um, but we have the World Cup this year. You know, she plays for Canada's national team. She starts. So... You know, yeah. I think that was probably a motivating factor um, was playing so she can, you know, stay ready for the World Cup. But we were so close last year and then we added a ton of firepower. Who wouldn't want to come back, you know, and, and give it one last hurrah, one last run. Give it your all. Who wouldn't want to do that? It's I, you know, she's just a great person and a great yep. teammate, uh, a good energy. She's that kind of enforcer position on the field. She's the captain. If anyone's got an issue, you come to me. You know what I mean? That kind of situation. So just very happy about that. Um, in, in additional similar similar news is uh, uh, we just got a, a Swedish uh, assistant coach, right? Yep. yep. That probably, probably goes hand in hand with our Swedish forward. I don't know. What's that about? I, I don't have – if I had a good Swedish accent, I'd do it right now, but I'm pretty sure it would just be offensive. So I'm going to pass. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to pass. This is people don't know it, but this is personal growth in its truest form. <laughs> if you knew, I mean, it is, it's, you're right. Yep. Normally. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to break out Muppet Swedish chef or anything like that. It just sounds 
uh, a little too much, but we're all doing it in our head right now. And it's very offensive to Swedish people. So I'm not going to do it, but uh, I think that they will be able to communicate well together. I mean, do, do they know each other? Do you know, do you know much about this? I mean, they both co or, you know, they're both on the national team at some point. So I imagine they have some form of relationship. Um, her name is uh, Caroline. Shajoblum. I don't even. Yep. Yeah. We'll yep. just go with that. So nailed it. You know, the current did not put a <laughs> nothing but net. You know, oh, shut up. No, I see Jordan in the chat. Shut the hell up. I do not. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's no phonetic spelling, by the way, given nah. for her last name. No, nah, so that's it. That's they set it. us Everyone... up to fail. They set us up to fail. <laughs> Everyone's taking what you just said, baby. That is a that's a that's a slam dunk. Uh <laughs> Oh my god. Come to Chris for all your you know, Ugh. I had to set you up for that. Yeah, go ahead, pronounce the yeah. name. I was like hoping that you would bring it up and then I realized you weren't. So yep. like I had to had to throw I the just, name in. Swedish coach probably has a name. I don't know. There's probably a name. <laughs> Chris, you should look it up, you know. Well, what we'll do, we'll we'll just maybe we'll try to have that coach on here and they can say their name for us. There we and go. we'll do our best to replicate. Can, yep. So that's that's a good call. There you go. Um, but what what else is in the world of Casey Current though? Nothing much. I mean, you know, going back to her, um, Caroline, I'm just going to mm -hmm. call her that. Uh, you know, did I say him? I didn't say him, did I? No, you didn't say him. Okay. Uh, I've been trying to work more on them. I've been really trying to, uh, you know, get my pronouns in check, man. Like, that's an important thing these days. You got to get them in check. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's important. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. But, you know, she was a coach for the under 19. Swedish national team. What I like about it is I feel like it's going to bring a different kind of perspective coming over. Um, Matt Potter also coached, you know, what uh, under 21. So they both kind of have that feel for coaching younger players. You know, it's going to be good for any draft picks, right? Just the familiarity with coaching younger players um, in, in Sweden. They're a really good team. They've historically been a good team. So, you know, it, I think it's a good fit and I think she's yeah. going to bring a lot to the table. I think so too. I, I'm. It, it works to add anybody like uh, anybody of that caliber to the staff is uh, super important. So I'm excited, man. Absolutely. Um, you know, Desi Scott coming back to uh, just and and to tease that. And didn't they? What they what what they do? Didn't they delete it like 11 minutes later or 11 hours later or something? What what was that about? You know, the blue crew on their discord takes screenshot. Oh, yeah. They took a screenshot and I, I apologize. Oh, yeah. I can't give cr proper credit, but they took a screenshot and that's the first I saw it because I think I was away from my phone that day. So I caught up and I didn't even catch the initial posting, but yeah. as soon as they posted that combined with some of the comments she left on, on some Kansas city current players, I knew it was only a matter of time. I knew we had our captain back, but yeah, you, you want it to be final. And eventually, eventually it came. So what, what what was the 11 thing, though? Was it deleted 11 minutes later or posted at 11.11 or something? That, that's Desi's number, 11. Yeah. Uh, so they were doing some sneaky shit, man. Guess what? Blue Crew's on it. They got the pipe and the Sherlock Holmes cap. <laughs> 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 They're on that shit, dude. It, <laughs> I'm just, I'm all about it. I'm I'm down with a good sleuthing. Like it's, it's a, get a good gumshoe, getting to the bottom of that, a good dick. You know, uh, Dick Tracy, if you will. Hell of a time. I, I uh, need to have a dictionary around you, sir. I got to go look up what a few of those even were. A gumshoe? Gum I don't even shoe? know you never, that. You never no. played Carmen San Diego? No, I've never played Carmen San Diego. You never played Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? No. You never played never, that? Never played it. There was a show and everything, dude. Not only was it like a game on the computer, but it was a whole show and you had to freaking... I would want, I would have this on my TV every day after school. And I was like, these freaking idiots, I would tell you exactly where Carmen San Diego is. I'd win the hell out of this game. Put me on the show. You know, I, I we need a tiebreaker because I clearly have never played or watched whatever you're talking about. What tiebreaker? Jo Jordan, tiebreaker. What are you time? familiar with? You're Jordan. saying I'm lying? No, you're saying I'm, I'm just, just saying, making it up. Like, I, no, I just, I want a tiebreaker in here to, am I in the, like, should I, did I have a bad childhood? Like, yes. should I have known that? Okay. Now Jordan's out. Of, he's out of control. <laughs> I'm not. So he's never he's played ne it. He's never played. Okay. It. There's no tiebreaker. Like it's like you're trying to prove me wrong or something. This is my truth. I'm not <laughs> wrong. 
Like this is absolutely a thing. She had, she wore all red, bro, and she would just it was you had to solve this this game. You were a gumshoe. You I, know I what would the term not gumshoe is no, and I do not want to take away your truth or, or you know. So I apologize uh, if someone said the word tech and they were like, "There's a tech taking her down." If someone said that, there's a detective jotting down notes. Do you know what that means? Huh? I went Cockney. I went Cockney British on you, Australian, because I'm not good at accents. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this uh, has gone on too we're far. We're off the rail. We're off. Do you want to go? Do you want to? It's getting fucking hot. Do you want to go talk to Jackie Gutierrez right now? Absolutely. Let's kick it over, Jackie. All right. I'm bringing it in, Jackie. All right, we are here with Jackie Gutierrez from Women Kick Balls. Jackie, how are you doing today? Doing good. How are you? Lots of lots of NWSL news. So hope you all are hanging in there. It's been it's City been Kirk wild. Supporters. It's uh we're busy every day. It feels like. Oh yeah, it's a thing. <laughs> yeah, you know, Jackie. Kudos to uh, the current. By the way, they actually uh, <laughs> save their 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 news to like have one big thing one week at a time. So it's been uh, no, most podcasts are like, oh, off season. What are we going to talk about? And Casey Current's like hold my beer i got you <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty classy for uh for casey and it's been cool to see their growth and just where they're going and obviously like all these expansion teams that have come after them too i think they've really set the bar so yeah i'm excited to dive into that but yeah off-season stuff is weird because you're like one week it's quiet and the next week you're like whoa there's a lot of stuff going on so <laughs> for sure uh we want to definitely talk about you as a person and what you do and how you do what you do um so tell us tell us a little about what you got going on i mean how'd you get involved in covering women's soccer uh everyone i'm sure a lot of people know you run the uh publication started from the ground up called women kick balls um is this something you've always wanted to do how did how did you decide to get this started yeah, so I actually grew up playing soccer for about 10 years, so it was just something that I loved as a kid, and my whole family was involved. We were definitely the soccer family with our orange slices, easy ups, that whole ordeal. So I was constantly at like you know practices every week and games every weekend, so it was just part of my lifestyle as a kid, and I always loved that, always been very competitive and very driven. I think being like growing up in a team sport, you just learned a lot about leadership too, so I say that definitely contributed to just how I am now as an adult and what I do but yeah I grew up playing it and then I've always loved writing I would literally show up to soccer practice reading books so I was just that kind of kid and so storytelling always fascinated me and unfortunately I stopped playing in my senior year of high school due to some health issues and it was really tough going from just being super involved in something to feeling like it just completely ended and that was it but I then got into watching soccer a lot more and I just had this idea where I was like, wow, I think I want to write about women's soccer. This seems really cool. But, you know, several years ago, it wasn't as common, you know, as it is now where people didn't have as many podcasts as they did now. So it was almost like unheard of, especially growing up in a small kind of environment. And so anyways, at 17, I was like, you know what? I want to be a sports journalist. have no idea what that looks like or how I'm going to do it, but I'm just going to go for it. And so I always talk about him, but my uncle Joe, when I told him that was like, Jack, we need to get you a website right now. Like, let's get you started, get experience. And in my mind at 17, I was like, well, I think you just go to college and then like figure that out and then get a job and then start writing. <laughs> and he was like, no, we need to get you started right now. And so he's been a day one supporter and, you know, he helped me buy like my first domain name and website and, and get me set up. And so I feel like I always tell people to have an uncle Joe in their lives because, he really just showed me that um, I can believe in myself, have that confidence and just do it. And so, yeah, growing up and, you know, before college, during college, I um, had just a few other publications and then I was a volunteer writer for so many other ones. And then it wasn't until 2019 where, um, you know, my uncle and I were talking and I had this website, but the domain name costs like two or three grand. <laughs> and he was like, if you really want to do this, like now is the time to make this decision on whether or not you want this name or you get a new one and kind of just figure that out. So, yeah, I sat around a table with my dad, my uncle, my brother and all these men <laughs> and most important men in my life. And I was thinking of names. And for some reason, I just thought of the name Woman Kick Balls. And I said it out loud and they all just kind of like started laughing. And I was like... No, I think that sounds cool, right? Like women kick balls. And of course, you're like, oh, yeah, like it's about soccer because, of course, like guys can get weird when they hear the name. And so it was just this <laughs> funny thing. And they were like, 
oh, that's good. And I was like, okay, well, I feel like I have their approval, so I might as well just do it. And um, yeah, I've done marketing and PR in some of my full-time jobs. And then in 20, gosh, what year are we? 2021, I graduated with my master's degree in journalism from the University of Oregon. And so, yeah, Woman Kickballs has gone from this dream that I had as a kid, but I feel like a lot of times, yeah, it's common to see that as a hobby, but now it's my full-time job where I manage things from a journalist perspective of providing accessible news on the NWSL and Houston's national team and growing the email subscribers, but then also um, in terms of like having a sustainable business and building revenue, I offer media services to different sports organizations and athletes, so I do all that on a freelance base from photo, video, like websites and all these different things. So I definitely stay busy too with um, not just the news, but then the client aspect and growing that. So this past year, I, I took on that, you know, self-employed title. It's been fun, super challenging um, because, yeah, I don't really have like a role model to learn from or someone who's doing things in the way that I want to. So it's definitely been a process of just picking the pieces from different people in my life and kind of just incorporating that into how I do things. So, um, yeah, that's like a whole kind of, I guess, the short uh, cliff yeah. note version of it, at least. <laughs> We'd ask what you do in your downtime, but I'm not sure uh, not much. you have any of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, my goodness. I feel uh, I feel like I need to do a little more now. Um, <laughs> no, you're <geez>. good. <laughs> uh, but when did you realize that this became a full time job or this should become a full time job? Like, when did you kind of quit your professional career and really focus on this full time? Yeah. So last year, last April, I was at a PR firm and I hated it. Like my potential was just being wasted because I was the first ever digital marketing hire. So it was just challenging sitting in an office where I have all these like this potential, these ideas, but you know, it took weeks to get approval on projects or whatever. So I just sat around and sometimes did projects that were just not what I wanted to do, not what I was passionate about. So last, um, yeah, April, when I was thinking about this or the beginning of last year, really, I was like, you know, it would be really cool to like quit my full time job in <laughs> December of 2022. But that actually ended up happening like six months earlier because I was so over it that I ended up quitting sooner and I started getting into some freelance work and I had this one job that I was doing and it was really exciting at first as most things are and then I got my first paycheck and I was like dang this sucks like this is not what I was you know hoping for it to be and so like yeah just that moment where you're like okay what am I doing with my life like I really had that moment and so I remember driving home and I was so like I was so just like what am I doing what yeah like what's next and so I I really started like thinking about it and I was like, you know, I can either sit here and have this little sad girl hour moment, feel bad for myself and talk about how hard life is, or I can really think about just like what brings me joy in the skills that I do as a professional. And so that's when I had this idea to create a magazine on women's soccer. And I just published my first magazine by myself and um, from all my own stories and photos and designing it and getting the ad sponsors I just found a way to make it happen. And I feel like that's a lot of my mindset and how things have evolved for me is just find a way to make it happen because my brain thinks of a project in like eight different angles and ways that, you know, it can get executed. And so it's a pro and a con because, you know, one of the reasons why I can't go to sleep at night, my brain is just like always full of ideas or thinking of something. So, um, yeah, it kind of just happened like not ra I guess randomly and naturally at the same time, if that makes sense. So yeah, it's been pretty crazy, pretty wild. So, um, yeah, my boss, you know, got to talk to my boss sometimes because I'm just working too much. So <laughs> you say getting down on yourself. I mean, just remember the name of your publication. I mean, it's it's pretty badass name, really. Uh, I could see why it might scare some men, but uh, yeah. a little, I, I love it. I love it. it. It's catchy and it rolls like right off your tongue, too. Right. It's it's unforgettable. You can't, you know, super easy to remember, but <laughs> You know, you mentioned how you built everything from the ground up, from the, you know, kind of your bootstraps, if I right. will. Um, what's that like building a company from the very beginning and not just kind of hopping into something that's already kind of working? Um, I, I know you, mm -hmm. you know, you send out trading cards and stickers and notes to subscribers. Like, has that been very beneficial in, in building um, kind of your relationship with your following? 
Yeah, I think that's always been my biggest thing is when I look at from my time as a player and growing up and learning about the NWSL and U.S. Women's National Team. I actually knew about the U.S. Women's National Team before the NWSL because it was still very new. And so when I think about like what I want to do or the approach that I want to have in projects, I always think about like, what would my younger self appreciate? And I wish my younger self got trading cards or knew that that was a thing. Um, and so for me, like my biggest thing is making articles accessible. I think we talk about growing the women's game specifically, but you can't do that if everything's behind a paywall because not everyone is to that point where they want to support it financially. Right. So I think one of the things that I've always loved is how women kick balls meets fans on every level from the hardcore people who will like do anything to just support, person learning about it for the very first time and learning about the NWSL and so yeah sending out stickers and trading cards I do it for fun and um, I generally enjoy writing people letters in that way so I love building a bridge building a connection to people my approach in women kickballs as a whole whether it's clients or subscribers or whatever that looks like I'm all about putting people first and so um, you know not to knock big name publications entirely because I know they have great resources and staff members but I think as a whole, big name publications usually just want access to your credit card and that's about it. And um, I've always tried to look at things as how how can I give back? How can I, you know, just like I said, do the thing that I didn't have growing up. So it's fun and challenging because you're just kind of like doing something and hoping that it works half of the time. So um, thankfully, most of the things that I've done worked. Um, and so there hasn't been any huge like crazy business move or something that I've done where it's a huge like loss or anything but I think that's just part of the process is um, getting your feet wet but then also just making sure that your intentions are good and right now I think the NWSL needs a lot of that with just some of these yeah. things that have been happening yeah. so I hope to kind of um, at least pave the way in the sense of just showing people like the approach that I have as a journalist as a marketer as a PR professional um, so yeah, I'm constantly trying to reach out to the NWSL in creative ways and let them know, Hey, you can hire me or I'd love to work together. Um, because again, I don't really know of a whole lot of people like doing it that way. So, I mean, might as well ask. And if they say no, then they say no, but I still have my own thing. And that's pretty cool too. Yeah. I mean, Jackie, everyone knows attitude and emotions <laughs> are infectious and you are just like, you are that light, that positivity mm -hmm. that I think I, I would like in my life. So when this is over, we're going to like, be best friends later and get yeah, you down yeah. to KC. I might be going to KC, to KC for soon, so I'll let you know. <laughs> oh, snap. Yeah, oh, hit us up. Right. We're season yeah. ticket holders. Uh, okay, cool. You know, however, you, you're in Southern California, right? Yeah. Okay. That's a tough job to be different out there. Uh, right. There's starting to be more and more coverage of women's soccer uh, in that region specifically. What's uh, What's been a challenge um, in terms of like sticking out and being different and not just one of the one of the soccer people? I think one of the hardest things too, now that I am a service-based company is that people just in general hear women kick balls or like they know of it maybe on social media. Um, and of course, half of the time people see me with a camera. So they're like, oh, if you take photo and video, like maybe you can do that for me and I'll give you the exposure, you know, that you need for your business. And so I think sometimes it's hard for in general to see my company as like a real profession versus like a hobby or something you do on the side. Um, I do like make YouTube videos and stuff now. So that's been fun, but I'm always kind of just looking for ways to grow. And so I think that's probably the first thing I can really think of, of distinguishing yourself Um you know, just as like, and I love people who like write for fun or like who have different outlets. But, um, you know, for me, it's not like, oh, I'm just going to do this in my free time. And like, yeah, whatever. I'm like, no, I am like wrapped around soccer, like literally from like 8 a.m. to like 12 p.m. at night when I'm up working. And so I love it. It's fun. But there's just a lot of moving parts. And so I hope that people or even the NWSL can take me seriously and realizing like, I'm this way too because I'm a product of these players and like what they bring to the table. Um, and I think too, in general in California, I mean, like there are so many people here. And so like with Angel City and San Diego Wave, it's been really fun to grow that and to have women's soccer in my backyard for the first time. I went from literally going to zero NWSL games a season to 27 very quickly. And so um, I guess along those lines, the challenge, you know, gas prices were super crazy this year. So I'm like, Dang, good thing I have a Prius because I was going from like, you know, <laughs> L.A. one day to San Diego the next and I'm always in traffic or like, you know, just caught up in, in tr like going places. So um, 
yeah, I feel like those are kind of a mix of like random challenges. But for me, like I know what this what these players are capable of. I know um, because I've experienced it, too, like as a young kid, as an athlete. So um, I love just trying to like show others like here's the potential and the ways that they're going to make a difference in this world, even if there's so much just crap going on with like investigations or lack of communication in a lot of areas so um i feel like through the challenges it's just a matter of like really pushing through and just finding ways to to grow or to just continue to like be that positive force because at the end of the day like we all need it too like i need it so um i feel like just you know finding the balance of that too is important do you have a one of the other that you enjoyed going to more whether it be angel city or san diego uh, this is tough. The spot, it's pretty, Dan. I know it's pretty, it's pretty close. Um, do it. I went to an Angel City game. I went to that when they played the Mexico national team last okay. year. It was it was so a hell of a time. You made a trip. We we had a vacation up there, and they just happened to have the game, and I was like, "Well, nice. we're going." <laughs> <laughs> Wait, when they played the Mexico women's national team? Yeah. Okay, I think I was supposed to go to that one. Um, it was hot as one. hell. It was. Yeah. They were having their heat wave, and I was like, "This is the worst time we could have come." Uh, Google said this was supposed to be a good time. What's happening? <laughs> yeah, a little rough. Um, I don't know. That's tough because I like them both for different reasons, in a sense. But um, and then of course, San Diego only had two at their big stadium in Snapdragon. Um, I don't know. It's really tough. But I think in in general, I like covering the wave. It's a longer drive for me, but. I just really like their their team atmosphere and what Casey's all about. And um, I don't know, everyone's like super nice. Not that people in LA aren't, but it's just different. Like, I don't know, it's there's two different feels to them. Um, but I mean, they're both great teams and I love covering them both and, and going to Angel City games too. So um, I don't know, it's hard. It's tough. It's pretty right. close, but I guess my what? vote would be like the wave. So kind of a politician answer, but that's all right. <laughs> I know I'm a PR you know person, so I know yeah. how to, to get around that. <laughs> Uh, I, I go to San Diego about once a year. So okay. like you see like how like San Diego residents are much more chill. Yeah, than, that's what I've been learning. LA yeah. is much more just go, 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 go. So right. when I meet up with the fans, I feel like that rubs off. Like they're just mm -hmm. super chill. And then Angel City fans are just kind of intense. They're like crazy, but fun. Like I go to bed at like 2 a.m. singing these Angel City chants. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like they did their job well. Because, you know, I'll be on the sideline, you know, hearing them and I see them and I'm pretty close. And when I first started shooting games with Angel City, I was literally like right in front of the supporters group section for a few games. They changed it up afterwards. But I was sitting there just like, man, this is cool. But it really provides just that like exciting environment where fans are just going for it. And then like I remember I was like sitting um, in that section one time and there was this young kid behind me and just his commentary on the game was so funny. Like um, the way he was talking about the players or he was like, you go girl, like you got that goal. And I'm like, okay, cool. He knows what's up, you know, but like this young kid and just the way he was talking about it. But I was like, you know what? That's cool that he's in this environment and that like he, he loves supporting this team and these women. I feel like growing up, I never really saw a lot of, young guys supporting the women's game it was like very almost uncool to do so and so that was like a really cool just kind of moment or example of seeing like wow he's like unapologetically just going for it and like cheering for this team um yeah. and like that's just what it's about so it's pretty fun but chris are you gonna get to a san diego wave game this year or what's happening you know i'm going i'm going to i'm gonna be a nerd for a minute but i'm going to comic-con in july okay. in san diego uh and i was hoping they would have a home game so I would yeah. I would try and go over to to Snapdragon, but I would love to. I would love to. Yeah, yeah. got to keep her on the schedule whenever that comes out because I feel like that's the whole whole thing in and of itself. God, I'm, I'm waiting for the <laughs> schedule release, right? Like yeah. we're all kind of holding on, waiting for Meg Lenahan to to release it, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, a thing. And two with the World Cup, it'll be just interesting to see what happens because I feel like that obviously changes things or impacts um, a lot of just the player information stuff. So um, this year wasn't, I feel like, too bad in terms of the FIFA windows, but I'm also not a player, so I can't fully say that. But in terms of covering it, it felt like pretty manageable. So it'll be interesting this year to, to see what comes from that. Absolutely. You know, I just can't get over you made and you know published your own <laughs> magazine. Yeah. I, I couldn't fathom I think it's like what forty pages, maybe. Yeah, I'm, forty pages. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what did that entail? Did you write all of that content yourself, or did you have anybody to kind of help you out? 
yeah, just me, myself, and I. So yeah, I didn't sleep for a long time. Um, and so <laughs> I um, literally, I'm a big list person. So whenever I have a list every day that I make <laughs> of tasks, and I literally bought a huge whiteboard from my desk or my office area because I was like, I need to write out every single thing. And even then there was stuff that, you know, I needed to do that maybe wasn't on the list. But yeah, I was just, it was insane going from, uh, just producing all of it. It was really fun because I my background is in design as well. So I've designed magazines and different projects, but not to that extent of doing everything on my own. So um, the biggest challenge like in that aspect was because I didn't know the results of the entire you know season, I was kind of updating these articles and these pieces as I went. So like you know, I'd work on maybe the magazine for eight hours on a Saturday, but then I wouldn't <laughs> touch it for like one week because I was kind of waiting around for other stuff to come in, whether it was results or just for something to happen or editing photos. So yeah, it was pretty crazy. It was really fun. Um, when I had this idea, I just, I don't know. I just was like, this sounds insane, but I'm just going to do it. So yeah, it happened. I'm always surprised that it did happen and that people bought it. So um, still on sale. I don't know if I'll do another one, but um, it was definitely something that I was like, you know, what? I, I don't really have anything to lose. I might as well just see if it works. And it, it did. So it's been fun. <laughs> no, Jackie, it is insane. It's, <laughs> it's, it's nuts. And that's what makes it that much more cool. You know what I mean? Like people yeah. that do the insane things, we're all like, holy shit, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, you got like Jimmy Conrad shared your shit. Yeah, uh, I met him recently. So you met so him cool. recently. It's so your good buddies. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I actually went to the United Soccer Coaches Convention. It's yeah. held every January and I didn't really know what it was at first, but then they reached out to me and um, this past year and like, hey, we'd love to have you come. We have this area called Podcast Row. You can interview mm -hmm. people and you set up a table and I was like, this sounds really great. Just so you know, I don't have a podcast. So if I can still come, then I'm all about it. <laughs> and they were like, no, we love to have you. So yeah, I just like, that was two weeks ago. So yeah, I feel like I'm full recovering from that. Cause it was just yeah. a lot of exciting things. I went to Philly on my own, you know, how to ship magazines and signs ahead of time to my hotel and things like that. But, um, seeing the traction, I'm, I, that was something that I definitely like, didn't fully realize of you know i don't know who's gonna hold this magazine in their hand and hopefully some cool things happen from it so i feel like i'm in that process of seeing just the after effects of all of it because um you know a lot of times as media or, or covering something when you're working on a project you, i mean at least for me i get so tunnel vision of like okay doing my thing that i kind of forget about some of these other things that can happen from it um so that's why I was kind of late to the podcast because I forgot about eating lunch and I was like, oh yeah, you need to do these things you now. <laughs> so um, that's just kind of how I work where I get so excited and so wrapped up in stuff that, um, like, like I said, my brain's just going. So I want to make sure that it gets done. And that was a project that, yeah, I don't know how I did it uh, like by myself in six months, but um, yeah, I was just like, you know what, this needs to happen. And I'm excited to like be in the position to do so because I'm in Southern California. So it, it worked out. It was, it was really cool. Yeah, I, we're going to ask you about Podcast Row and how that was. Yeah, um, you guys should go next for, year. We we were asked uh, okay. the past couple years, but we've been we were independent since uh wow, going on 5 years not 6 years. And nice. so uh Congrats. we just we just got with KC Sports Network and so maybe we can get them to pay for us next year. Yeah, there you go. Since SoCal next year in Anaheim, so you know, Oh, hell yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, it'd be awesome. I, I'm a big Disney nerd, so let's uh let's get on that. <laughs> there you go. You know, uh Jackie, I believe you were at the uh, NWSL championship, right? I was, and the NWSL draft, so okay. back to back we, stuff. It's been fun. We also made the trip uh, to the NWSL championship. Uh, yes, yeah. Casey Current. Uh, we talked about our experience a lot on here. What What was your time like? What did you think of the the stadium? Uh, we don't got to talk about the game. Don't have to get into that. <laughs> the, the atmosphere. Yeah, how you? Right, how was your experience? Yeah, it was good. That was uh, actually my very first time. Yeah, traveling to a game on my own. So. Um, I was like, cool, let's just go for it. Of course, my parents are always like, are you okay? Share your location. And I'm like, yo, it's fine. I will be good. I'm around soccer people. Um, I mean, I get it, but I, it was just really excited to be there. I've grown up, yeah, watching the championship games and like covering it online or because of COVID with like Zoom interviews and whatnot. So seeing it all in person and then, of course, all my colleagues in like one room, it was like, whoa, this feels like Twitter, but like in real life. And, you know, so it was kind of just this, surreal moment of seeing everything just come to front but i never been to dc so it was great i mean the only i guess negative thing i have to say about that experience was like i had to pay a hundred dollars for parking beyond um, like on the game like day which sucked because i paid ten dollars before 
and as media like you normally get parking covered for you but I like was staying about an hour away so I, it's not like I could just you know I, I'm not from there so I had a car it wasn't like I could just drop it off somewhere really easily and I have camera gear so I'm not trying to pay um, you know or trying to walk late at night or whatever to like a parking yeah. lot or go on the subway like I don't know how the subways work over there so like yeah just that was like annoying but um, yeah other than that it was like really fun so I loved it for sure we were kind of talking about how the stadium's a little different uh, just kind of yeah. you know we're used to Children's Mercy Park a lot but the DC likes their steep steps. It, <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a situation. You know, don't don't work out your legs that morning. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. You have to use those handrails, right? You you absolutely have to. You can't freestyle that thing, or you're gonna take a tumble. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys get to like stick around and talk to players afterwards, or are you just kind of taking it all in? We we're just kind of taking it in. Uh, mm. We at, we were on vacation in Vegas, me and my wife, and we altered our return flight to Kansas City to go hit DC. So it was oh, like cool. team no sleep that weekend, you know? So. <laughs> yeah. Good time. <laughs> That's fun. Glad you went for it. Cause I feel like the fan experience beforehand, I was walking around and just seeing, you know, team selling merch and just the yeah. ways that the NWS players, like some players were there and um, the broadcast like, going on. Yeah. The broadcast, like it just seemed like a really good, like, I guess, environment for fans to like feel engaged and kind of be a part of something bigger and whatnot. Um, that was something that, I mean, I don't know. I this is my first draft going to it in person, but I kind of thought the draft would maybe be that way too beforehand or something, and it wasn't. But it was really cool just to see and know that there were so many people like really excited about that. So that's cool that you guys just got to experience it. And yeah, what a game! So <laughs> you you kind of led right into my next question. Um, I'm a big draft nerd. Like I like oh. to follow kind of the mock drafts and big boards. And we had Chris Henderson on okay um, yeah. a, a few weeks ago, but what were your thoughts on the draft? How was it like live and in person? Cause I'm very jealous. It seems like such a, a great time. <laughs> it was cool. Definitely overwhelming for sure. Um, you know, I'll kind of paint a quick picture of it cause it was my first time too, but for media, they had tables where you can sit down and, you know, work on your laptop and kind of see everything. And then right in front of you is the center where, and it's blocked off too. So all the coaches and their GMs and staff are at these tables, the stuff you see on the broadcast, but the media are just on the other side of that. And then behind the media, there's this curtain and some staff members of the teams are working. There's more tables and then uh, co coaches and players that come through for media interviews. And so anyways, uh, when I got there, like, all the tables from media like were full and I couldn't find anything. And I mean, I'm usually walking around taking photos. So I was like, Oh, this will be fine. Like I'll just, you know, like walk around. No big deal. My feet were hurting so bad at the end. <laughs> like, cause I kept just wandering around and just like, you know, talking to people or like taking pictures or like eating snacks um, that they had, whatever. And so it was cool. Definitely a lot going on and seeing it from, yeah, like an in-person perspective was different just because I've covered it on zoom where you're like, in a waiting room trying to wait for a coach but like in person everything is just unfolding right there so yeah there were some a lot of trades going on obviously but I was like kind of surprised too because just seeing how fast paced it is in person we're like you know you know something's going on if someone's like huddling over their table and like whatever or they're counting on their you know hands like or something and you're like oh, <laughs> kind of suspicious you know and like <laughs> trying to be all like nonchalant too so it was kind oh. of just interesting like picking up on some of the body language of like what was going on just in front of you um, because like we can't go in that area. So I was just kind of being a people watcher, which I feel like I usually am. I'm already like a people watcher in general, but you kind of just like processing all that, you know? So yeah, it's a lot. Oh, that's so funny. I just <laughs> look at Chris Long's looking a little shady over there. What's he yeah, up to? He's like, <laughs> you know, no like <laughs> he's probably got trying to trade to number two. What's he up to? Yeah, uh, doing math and numbers. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's a whole thing that you gotta, you know, be on top of. So yeah, yeah. you know, as uh, as media, uh, media is very unbiased for the most part when they cover teams and stuff like that. They don't really uh, people that cover the league don't really talk about their team in general. Mm -hmm. um, do you have? Is there a team that has your allegiance, your fandom? <laughs> I don't know. It's tough. Um, really? I mean, I obviously cover all 12 teams and yeah, like I'm very um, just straight to the facts, to the point. So that's always been my style. But I think because I grew up like in the NWSL environment where the first team I ever heard about was back in the day, it was called Seattle Rain, which is now OL Rain. I feel like I've always really just enjoyed watching them um, because when I was in high school, I actually came home one day and uh, my mom was like, yeah, my coworker's daughter plays with Hope Solo. And I was like, 
what are you talking about? That must mean she's on the national team because that's all I knew at the time. And the league was like a year old. And so anyways, I'm like, mom, you got to find more info. Like, come on, what's this about? You know, I'm trying to Google <laughs> players or whatever. Yeah. And so maybe that was like the young journalist to me. I don't know. But then uh, she came back and she was like, yeah, my coworker's daughter, her name's Bev Yanez, and she plays with Old Rain. And so sort of, I started Googling Bev and I'm like, whoa, she's really good. And then I just started watching it because I'm from a very small town called Merino Valley. And I just oh. describe it as a bunch of dirt because no one knows I've where it's there. at. And, and Bev's from Merino Valley. So I was my, like, whoa, yeah. wait, you know where it's at? Well, I, my grandma used to live there and I, uh, we would drive up there. We would drive from Topeka, Kansas and, no uh, you know, stop in Vegas on the way or Utah or whatever, little stops. Yeah. And Rainbow wow. Valley, man, it was uh, it was crazy. Nothing, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> like, was fine. Small yeah. town. We're just getting a Texas roadhouse, and it's like the big deal in town, you know? Because it's like, <laughs> whoa, this is crazy. Yeah. So, wow, that's crazy. Wow, God bless you. I feel like people <laughs> do not know about Marino Valley. That is so um, funny. Yeah, so Bev's from Marino Valley, and I just started watching her. And, um, you know, when I was still playing, I was just really fascinated. Like, wow, I never knew of anyone from Marino Valley or from kind of where I, I'm from knowing like anyone that made it so it was such a big deal to be like whoa it doesn't matter where you come from like you can just like you know kind of go for it in life and I feel like that example really just inspired me so anyways that's how I got into Oil Rain and watching them was because of Bev um, now she's a coach uh, with racing so it's been like cool to follow her journey and just to see it too with other players as well I know Lola Bonta's from SoCal and um yeah just all the connections that like kind of come with where you're from or where you go to school whatever it is so it's been like really cool to kind of see that um but yeah I'm definitely the person who's like I love when everyone plays and I don't care who wins type of thing so um yeah everyone just have fun yeah yeah <laughs> one of those I'm here to write about it so <laughs> that's like the cool part about it too oh. I think my favorite is uh, mom. Okay. Thank you for having sources, but I need more substance, mom. <laughs> yeah, I was like, mom, seriously. Like she was just over here name dropping and then walks away, you know? And I was like, what the heck? Like you Get can't do here. this too. Yeah. And so like, that was another thing too, where once I learned about like the end of e cell, then I really started diving into it and was like, whoa, where do I get my news? How do I figure out what this thing is? And so I think my brain instantly just started thinking of like, you know, the problem is that there's a lack of resources and a lack of like places to learn about it. So then I just kind of got plugged into that. Um, but yeah, it's been one heck of a journey, but it really did kind of start with um, Seattle rain and just that whole like process of things. So yeah. I get it. I get it. You're kind of more of a, a pl you know, player follower connections. Uh, yeah. Geographical yeah. Stuff. That's cool. Um, well, you know, we're, we get big in Casey current. We do talk mm -hmm. about the league as a whole as well and other things going on mm -hmm. in the NWSL. Um, so Casey current are investing so much in the women's game and, yeah. you know, we're talking the training facility and the new stadium. Um, I think it's going to change the standard for the league. I mean, I think it's bringing new players in because why wouldn't mm -hmm. you want to be there with those facilities? Um, what, what, what are your thoughts on everything? And uh, you know, will you be uh, attending a game at the new stadium? You know, yeah. what's, uh, what do you think what the current's been up to this off season? It's been really cool just seeing from when they first announced it. I don't remember the exact, it's been a while since I looked into their, their stadium specifics, but what, like just seeing the number that they're like millions of dollars and um, just what it will look like. And yeah, the players that are getting excited about it. Like there's so many great, I think, moving parts to what they're doing. And so kind of how I was mentioning earlier, like I really look at people's approaches and I think their approach to, just trying to like grow the league and what they want to do in that area is really awesome. I mean, seeing from when they like rejoined the league, I mean, they were just, they were struggling. They were on the struggle bus for sure, which is not really um, having consistency or just like major results. I mean, they ended up in the last place. So like seeing what the longs have been doing, I've been like really just blown away and like hopeful too. I mean, despite, and through all this, you know, just scandals and the the reports and everything, like, I think it's been like a cool beacon of hope to really show people like, yes, there is stuff going on. There is growth that needs to happen for sure. But I think they're paving the way of like, here's a great, a great example of what we can do and how we can go about that. Um, just because like you were saying, like players wanting to go there. I mean, I think that speaks a lot for, for what's happening and the fact that they're still like under construction. You know, it hasn't fully um, 
been completed. So I'd be surprised, you know, once that gets up and going and there's games there and seeing people that come or players that come through and, and the excitement that'll come from it, I think that'll like set a whole new kind of, um, I don't know, just fire as to what's going to like be next or, or what, you know, other players can maybe hope to expect or, or setting that standard. So yeah, there's a lot. I would definitely love to visit and, and see what that's like um, in action because it'll be pretty crazy, um, especially going from like being over here in Southern California and seeing all these fans just go like nuts over things. Like, I can't imagine what it'll be like over there and just the, the fan environment, the rivals or whatever that looks like. Absolutely. Uh, let us know if you make it this way. I mean, we'd love to yeah. you know get something set up for you. Roll out the red carpet and all that. <laughs> uh, I feel like, uh, you know, like you said, bringing players, we said bringing players in, it's attractive and stuff. Mm -hmm. Conversely, I I feel so bad for the players that like get let go. And I'm like, they're not going to get to experience this. (laughs) They will. Everyone will just be rooting against them, though. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) One thing that I really like is, you know, I really hope that, you know, the new stadium training facility, all the investment can drag some of the team's that have been in the league for a while, but haven't invested like Chicago, right. you know, um, uh, I'm trying to think Houston is another example, you know, Southern California and, and mm-hmm. those teams are investing. They have a lot of like you know, celebrity investors, a lot of name recognition and, you know, with the longs, what they're doing, I just really hope it can, you know, take the league as a whole and bring some of those other teams and ownership groups that are, for lack of a better way of saying, not investing what they should right. to, to, to move this sport forward. So, um, I, I think the current and then the Southern California teams are really onto something to try yeah. to move this this league forward. I was going to say, too, I don't remember what the exact number is. I don't know if either of you know it off the top of your head of what the stadium capacity is. I think it was like maybe 10 or 11. I could be wrong. Isn't it? I think it's 11. 11. The new one. Yeah, that was my only thing where 11, I was thinking about it. And I was like, I wonder why it's not more. Because you look at the end of his whole attendance record, 32,000 people. Um you know, yeah, the stadiums over here easily hold like 20 plus thousand. Um, and I mean, maybe it has to do with state regulations or capacity there. I don't know. But that was my only thing where I was all like, this is really cool. I'm surprised it's not a bigger stadium. But yeah, I mean, either way, it's going to be great to have something that's like, you know, of quality standard there, too. For sure. Uh, one last thing, Jackie, before we wrap up with you. Uh, what's uh, what's what's one thing? that that would let you that would lead you to predict Casey Current to win the whole thing this year. <laughs> what what's what's one uh storyline that needs to happen? Oh, man, this is tough. I feel like this is harder than the other question is about it, is, what team is there, I prefer. <laughs> <laughs> is there a player that needs to stay healthy? I mean, is it cohesiveness or more goals from a certain player or anything? Yeah, actually I was thinking about this earlier and I I was looking at their stats from this past season. Like, don't get me wrong. They did incredible stuff. They made it really far, obviously, to the championship. But if you look at their goals, I just feel like they could be higher. I mean, they ranked sixth place out of all teams in goals. So 33, I mean, yeah, that's good. But I feel like it could be better with just their talent. So I'm not exactly sure in terms of just, like, what that missing, like, formula is for them. But I think delivering more on goals is, like, a big obviously a big deal because that's how you know you get your points and what results in games um and whatnot so i think that would be the biggest thing because you look at 80 french like killed it in the back of the net and made so many saves i think yeah it ranked like number two this season for saves so i feel like that's covered but in terms of delivering finishing um finding the final touch like that's something that i would say like probably just needs to happen a little bit more i think something that I've noticed about them that I've really appreciated is that whenever I see them in a training environment or a championship game, like seeing them the day before, they're just like all smiles and like super happy and excited to be there. And I'm like, cool. Like, you know, just yeah. seeing their attitude, I think speaks um, for itself and like what Matt has done. But I think that's probably my only, I guess, critique or way that they can improve is just, um, yeah, finishing up on some of those goals. Cause that's obviously very key. And I think they have so much potential, Um, so I don't necessarily know if it's like a certain player or what that looks like, but I think that's probably just like the overall thing that I can think of. Cause yeah, it's been very exciting to see them. Um, I feel like this is kind of biased of me, but because I'm from the university of Oregon, like I always like low key, I'm just rooting on Chardonnay Coran, who's also from the OVO. So it's really cool to kind of like see some of those connections, but, um, yeah, just knowing that these players have a lot of potential is like very exciting. 
Yeah, goals. I mean, obviously, win games. You know what I mean? It's like when when OL Rain had like a twenty goal differential and we had a zero. <laughs> I was like, oh man, this playoffs. I don't know how we're here right now. Yeah. You know, thoughts and prayers, but seriously. Uh, you know, but you mentioned the smiles and stuff. Everybody on Casey Current, if they're having fun, we're having fun, and right. it's just the freaking best. So, and yeah. Jackie, you've been the best today. I mean, where just you've been a Thanks. bright spot. Uh, a gym on this hump day <laughs> and uh where where can people find you and your publication how can they get the magazine what's uh where's where's your stuff yeah good question um honestly it's been a blast too i know sometimes on podcasts and you're just like you don't know what to expect talking to people for the first time so it's just been cool and really um an enjoyable experience i appreciate you both having yeah. me on but yeah everything can just be found uh at women kickballs on instagram twitter tiktok because that's a thing i think facebook which i don't even really use that much but facebook is a thing um youtube as well and then in terms of buying the magazine or even subscribing the just like go-to place to find everything is just womenkickballs.com and so on there you can subscribe get a free sticker or you can purchase the magazine there's a link and a pop-up on that so um yeah i don't even know the full the, the link for the magazine is like some long like Shopify URL. So I was like, you know, this would be easiest to just have on the website. So, um, yeah, that's where people can find everything. And my goal is to try to sell at least 400 more copies because, you know, I ordered a thousand thinking, oh, I'll for sure sell out. And then, yeah, I mean, I've sold a good amount, but I would like to just not have 400 extra copies in my room because I'm not going to read it. So <laughs> they need good homes. <laughs> I love that. I know we have a lot of uh, very passionate supporters that listen uh, that are probably heading there right now. So hopefully cool. we can help you out with that. So yeah, thank uh, you. Chris, anything else today, man? Everything oh, good? I, I do not. I, I'm just very cool. thankful and gracious that uh, Jackie gave us your time. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Jackie, we, we went over than what we promised. And uh, thank you so much. It's been it's been a blast. <laughs> thank you. Likewise. Wow, buddy. Wow. New best friend, Jackie Gutierrez. New best friend of ours. We've just cultivated this relationship. Uh, we're probably going to go eat at Blue Moose when she comes to town. Uh, no, no, we're not. Probably more vegan friendly fa place for me. But uh, <laughs> I'm just, ah, I'm sorry, dude. And, and she stuck around and talked to us for like another 10 minutes afterwards. Uh, sorry you guys didn't get that conversation, but it was, it was very important to me. And she just brightened up the day, dude, talking about women's soccer. And I'm like, how much of this? is because you're just super bright person or because you got this new exciting publication going on. All I'm saying, Jackie, is don't forget us when you make it to the big time. <laughs> don't, don't lose this positive attitude when you make it big. But if you do, remember, we were here for you on the ground level. Uh, you know, I feel like if she wanted to give up soccer, she could be a motivational speaker because I was ready to go learn, like do all the things I've put off for ages. I was ready to go just stop and go do. Buddy, if you're ever watching Netflix, you have you're gonna have to be like, wow, I bet Jackie Gutierrez doesn't watch Netflix. What am I doing with my life? <laughs> As she was like talking about everything she's you know masters and everything yeah. she's she's done and doing, I'm like, I promised myself five years ago I'd learn Spanish, haven't started. You yeah. know, I I just I feel like as soon as this podcast ends, I'm gonna go do something productive. That I'm gonna I learn promise. Spanish tonight. It's gonna have I'm gonna download actually I'm not gonna download, I have Duolingo. I'm gonna log back on and I'm gonna mm -hmm. learn some Spanish. She's you need to really commit, bro, and get Rosetta Stone. I don't know the difference. They're probably the same, right? Yeah, it's expensive. <laughs> it's expensive. It's expensive. Oh my god. But like I just love what she's doing. Like yeah. you know, we kind of hinted, you know at it in the interview that traditional women's soccer media ES, espn or, or what have you they don't cover they cover it differently they cover it like a business she yeah. covers it like you know it should be covered she's putting players first she's she's looking at it you know from a, a fan and player perspective and, and trying to bring attention and, and prop it up the way it should be and not trying to get you know clicks because of a, a headline article you yeah. know she's doing everything the right way and and i think it's you know, journalists like her uh, that are, are, are pushing um, media companies to do a, a much better job with women's soccer. And well, I know next year, a little uh, little goal of mine is to get us to that U.S. soccer convention um, okay. on podcast row. You, me, Jimmy, Jordan, Tucker, whoever, like, let's let's make this a reality because we've been asked the past 
two or three years maybe, and we've had to decline because um, it just doesn't work out. It's not, it costs money. You got to take a vacation or whatever. So I don't know if we can try to make that happen sometime. But I think one thing that stood out to me was that uh, her family being so supportive. They didn't look at her and say, well, that's fucking stupid. You know what I mean? They didn't say right. that's that's just silly. Uh, they, they're they like, well, no, we need to do that now. And I think my favorite part was she goes, but college, right? Like, what about college? And they're like, F college. Like, <laughs> and she's like, mm, college feels important. And they're like, no, you, you're 17. You're doing it now. <laughs> we, we all need an uncle in our life like hers. I was uncle, like, no, nope. uh, I'll have to listen back. What was the uncle's name? Uh, oh, my gosh. Joe? Was it, no, it was a Jim. Uh, Sorry, than M. M? M. Was it Mo? No, it was, I don't know if it was. God dang it. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to listen back. We're going to feel real stupid. Yep. I always listen back. I love listening to myself because I'm, you know, conceited. But I think that, uh... <laughs> how dare you not laugh at that? That means I'm, you feel it too. I'm in my head in agreement. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm supporting you. No laughter at all. Chris is like, yeah, it's ridiculous. This guy's out of control. <laughs> But we all need an uncle like that in our life. That's yes. like, don't put your dreams aside. Just go for them. You know, college will be there. Or if you can do it with college, but do not set your dream aside. Go attack it. And Absolutely. she did. And she's she may, she had her own magazine, man. Like incredible. So go check that out if you haven't, by the way. Um, she, has uh, a, she has some copies in a room. So I, I I just, dude, I thank you for bringing her to this podcast. Um, I I. I just been lost. I'm not huge on social media. I don't see all that stuff. Um, so making me aware of her stuff, I, I'm definitely a fan. I'm definitely a follower. I'll definitely be reaching out and getting that magazine if my wife isn't listening to this already and already purchased it. <laughs> I guarantee I you she's already been on it. But uh, just so so very fortunate, man. I, I hope we can get her to Kansas City. Uh, you know, maybe she can sit with us in the uh, uh, supporter section and just have a tailgate or something. Be a hell of a time. Yeah, and I think what really drew me to her is last year when the teams were doing the roster cuts down to their final active season roster, I was bouncing around looking for certain teams and, and websites to, to get this information, and she had it all on there, on her Twitter, sorry. So she posted on her Twitter what the rosters were every time it was announced. Like, she was on it. So she provided wow. me a lot of value. I didn't have to go search places or, you know, I just went right to her social media she had it all right there for me, um, and I've just started following her ever since. And what she's doing, I feel lucky to to be following her on the ground up, you know, from the beginning. Yeah, because she's gonna do really, really good things, and she's provided a lot of value to to the women's soccer community. Well, if you if you hear from her, man, you thank her so much. Like this was a real, uh, this was a real important one. I know this wasn't like a a flashy player or a coach that we interviewed or something, but this just, I don't know, this one felt different and important. So very cool that she was able to take time and she's busy dude she's got like a whole request vibe uh that if you want to have her on on your show or something here fill out a request and you were like boom top of the list getting in you know you were you were on top of it so you're the new you're the new booker for the show i, I just booker, like to booker C. <laughs> i like to what i want to see is what i want to bring on right like with chris henderson and and, and jackie so what I want to see other people do is what I try and try and bring to the table. I dig that. Well, you bring it, man. And uh, I am the table. So thanks for bringing it. Very well. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. I just went with it. Yeah. We're on the head of the table. So acknowledge me, yeah. you know, well, buddy, I, uh, I, I got nothing else this week. You got anything else for everybody? No. Um, I just hope we have some more news. We've been pretty fortunate. Um, every week there's something to talk about. I don't know if we're going to have that luxury. No, nah, I mean, it's uh, it was kind of a we didn't talk about much else. I know the NWSL investigation kind of wrapped up with some teams. Uh, people just be giving coding to anyone that didn't ask for it. Sounds fun. Uh, you know, we didn't get much into that at all. But uh, the interview went a little long. And uh, again, gracious that Jackie lent her time. So, yeah, well, well, I'll wrap it up then if you're cool with that. Let's go. All right, buddy. Let's go. At no other pod. Follow us. Twitter, Instagram, wherever you like to do your socials. We're there, except probably on those other ones that aren't as good. Uh, at Dan Kuzer, at Chris Wright 21. Send us an email, knowtherpot at gmail.com. Love getting those. Uh, you're not limited to 240 characters. You could write us an essay, and we'll probably read the whole damn thing if it's good enough. Uh, got nothing else. Five-star rating and review. 
uh, hit us up and we'll talk to you guys uh, next week with more uh, Teal Time, Teal Talk, Teal City, currently Northern Pod. We love you. Bye-bye.